My name is Tonya Curry, and this is this week's Acumen Media Report. It's entitled, The State of Disaster is Over, or is it? The week started off well. The president ended the state of disaster and most of us were still questioning if we needed masks at all. It's only been two years, but we're still here. We all had a Black Coffee Monday when we learned of the wonderful news that the artist Black Coffee smashed the Grammys. South Africans really did make an impact. We brought home nine of those little statues. I think we found our niche, eh? Trevor Noah was the host, and even though many were unhappy about him using Squid Games as a method to learn Korean, yes, he said that, for the most part, we let it slide. I was a happy bunny. We had good news, South Africa, and it felt like a DJ had saved my life. While engrossed in Grammy talk, I read that Zelensky made an appearance. I did a double take. What? I mean, if you're going to appear at the Grammys, why not appear at the Oscars too? That's where we needed someone to put things into perspective. I was so surprised. Isn't Zelensky busy with a major war with a superpower? It started, in fact, isn't it far more than a war? Over 4,000 civilians have been killed and the Western world have started to call it genocide. Russia has been suspended from the human rights body while we watched body bags fill a pit. To which Putin said it was an elaborate hoax. Ukraine calls for more weapons and oil prices are so wild that you should ask who is benefiting from the death of these civilians. State of disaster. Without being callous, but always being controversial, I have to point you to some hard facts here at home. In the past decade, five million people have died in Korea. On our continent, Five children die every minute, and at least three of those could be saved if they had food and medication. A total of 6.3 million children died in our continent in 2013 alone. State of disaster. Here in South Africa, on average, 51% of women are subject to gender-based violence, and 76% of men admit to being guilty of GBV in one way or another. In April last year, during hard lockdown, there were 120,000 cases of gender-based violence reported. Who knows what the true number really is? State of disaster. Did the world stop? No. Did South Africa stop or even address this, dare I say, genocide? No. In April last year, almost 6,000 civilians were killed, and this week, a school in the Eastern Cape put 500 children in five classes in a school that has no toilets whatsoever. State of disaster indeed, but not genocide, according to the world's media. I did say the week started off well, but there are massive scales in South Africa, and Mm. we go from world class Mm. to the gutter Mm. in seconds. Mm. Dipslut. My goodness, what a story. It started with the fact that seven murders happened during the course of a week and the police did, well, what the police do, glide like fat snails, slow and ineffectual. Except snails don't go backwards, do they? According to one interview, there are parts of dip slurts that are so dangerous that the police won't even drive through there. The people started rising. Enter and Shantla Lux. His popularity is rising faster than Will Smith can get out on stage, guys. Immediately, Malema said it was a PR stint for Lux, and Lux promptly posted a video of the people of Dipslurt so happy you'd swear a superhero arrived to save them from the decades of horror that Dipslurt has suffered. suffered. Let's be frank, that township is filled with terror and has been for decades. So the crowds take to the street and there are tires burning and fear is searing. The police, drawn now to action, fired stun grenades and rubber bullets at civilians. Some were badly hurt from the response to protect and serve. But hot off these events, Taylor arrived and calmed the situation down by promising resources to the crime issue immediately and handcuffs at the ready. I have so much respect for this man. I don't care if you don't agree with me. He's the right man for the job. Once form, some form of calm was restored, 
Then the EFF, well, largely Malema, picked his rescue from the aftermath. We saw him do it in Operation Dadula, a ground force attack on drugs. We saw them do it with Mafe, who allegedly set fire to Parliament, and now this week they picked up Nyati, a foreign national who was beaten up in the deep slurt rage. My scepticism radar is always working, and I'm trying to understand why there is this copy-paste issue with Operation Dadula and Enchantla Lux. Dadula is on its way to Durban now. The police are on high alert, and we still have PTSD from the insurrection. It prompted me to study Lux from a different angle. Which political party is he most aligned with when he's with his messaging and his method of gathering support? Put South Africans first is the narrative of Action SA. It fits the narrative. A radical movement will not keep the middle class voters that Mashaba already has. So leave it to Lux. Then, of course, his method of ground movement is very much like Malema's. And we all know that the foreign support sits with the EFF, but they can't vote. So the EFF had been at the same time at the same election mark for two races. Maybe they need the locals now and we'll see a merger of the two things together later. Or is Lux completely on his own? He must be pretty wealthy if he is. The branding of Operation Dadula cost a marketing arm and a leg. I promise you that. The PR alone on this man is the stuff dreams are made of in my industry. Something's off. I'm not sure what. State of disaster. Malema has had a busy week even outside of Deep Slurt. He took Van Riebeck Day, do we even have such a thing, and turned it into Land Day. His red tide flooded the gates of Rupert's residence. Malema had the audacity to call the black guard on duty a fool and went on to say that Rupert even owns the air we breathe. He has given Rupert 14 days to respond to his land demands while, why, he, why he doesn't go to Eustace's place and pick up the couple of billion that was stolen there and then buy the land that is needed in his fight for his territory, I do not know. State of disaster. Malema also gave a potential judge a hard time about some case from 19-whatever that no one could remember. The irony is that the very next day, Malema and Ndlozi appeared in court in front of a judge and here witnesses gave evidence of how Malema pushed a security guard Fenta. I'm not sure why testimony was necessary, though. There is a tape. It's pretty clear he did do that. In fact, he was in a blind rage. I also understand why. His mom had just passed away. Mama Winnie's death and anniversary is this week. I wish it was true that, we, you know, that saying, she did not die, she multiplied, but it's not. Women are fodder, swallowed whole in the gluttony of politics. At one point in the proceedings, Malema compared his court case to that of Solomon Maslangu. Yes, you heard me right. The activist from 1979 who was sentenced to death by hanging for his fr- fight for freedom. Really, Julius, you should see someone, brother. You're losing the plot state of disaster let's switch it up because there is far more politics to report on so i want to keep your attention have you subscribed to our youtube channel it's called acumen media it's the funniest thing you'll see all week much funnier than the stuff i'm telling you let me give you a quick break from the somber narrative would you believe that there was a tembisa 10 docu series well there sure was and it was entered into the global journalism awards no it wasn't Oh, yes, it was. And the next thing, it was pulled from the awards. Well, duh. How did they even make a docky about the deceptive decouplets? I really, and I mean really, want to watch it. Don't lynch me. We all need a good laugh in the state of me- the media disaster. Talking about telly time, I cannot wait to gobble up the Senzo docky. No spoilers, please. Okay, back to politics. The president this week said the house is on fire as he described the state of ANC factionalism. This is after defiant Msibi, twice murder accused, had been asked to step aside 
and many of from the uh, and as many others were from the other ANC. They have become enraged by the step aside ruling. He was telling it like it is, the president, when it dawned on me. He's done. Guys, I think he's done. I mean, with his new regime, not like leaving the building done. He did it. While we were fighting, he is now guaranteed a second term because of the way he moved that chessboard. Guys, he may have put the good guys, and I use the term liberally, in the right positions. Didi Mabuza even lost his foothold in Mpumalanga. And then Moody's upgraded us. Drop the Diza and just leave the star. No Diza star. There's still so much to cover and I'm running out of words. Nomia Rosemary Ndlovu, convicted serial killer, appeared in court this week on new charges. This time she had tried to kill two policemen. I'm so glad she's behind bars. She really is a state of disaster. A former SSA clerk who stole 170000 wants his job back. Okay, and analog TV is dead. Buildings were torched at the UFS campus. That underground fire in Joburg CBD last week switched off the whole of Josie. We're still seeing little fires everywhere. There have been arrests in the Esther Mashlangu case. Koza was seen having a meltdown on Twitter and we still don't deal with male mental illness, do we? Tom Cruise shoots in Durban, shoots in the film kind of way. The real star is coming this weekend, Lux. My story of the week is the trolley surfer. I'm sure you've seen it. It was a viral sensation all across social media. Some guy cheated the fuel price hikes and hitched a shopping trolley to an engine truck It was pouring with rain, but this guy flew down the Gauteng highways, attached by his hands and shopping trolley. He waved to passers-by with a big smile on his face. Two things. One, he's madder than a box of snakes. But we all secretly hoped he was alive because the story was just so mental. And two, I'm happy to tell you he did survive. That shuffly madness. While he gapped it, he did gap it though when the truck driver stopped to investigate. The other thing is, who made those shopping trolleys? They should be fixing our infrastructure. Check out the YouTube video for some footage. I've told told you twice now. That trolley is better than most cars. I'm out of words. Only one thing more. Elon Musk, currently designing the Tulsa trolley, is officially the largest shareholder of Twitter. And Twitter tweeted to say that they are testing the edit button. Now that is a real disaster. Be safe. Give a hungry person a loaf of bread if you can. I'm Tonya Curry, and you've just scratched the surface with Acumen Media. I take pleasure in it.